Hello everyone, Ogre27Kane here today, today, and we're going to do a review of Resident Evil Revelations 2 for the Nintendo Switch. This is kind of a special request for Legends Never Die, a viewer of mine who had some questions about this, so I think we should do a real quick overview and discuss what this game's all about. This game is the sequel to the 3DS game Resident Evil Revelations. This game was originally released on the PlayStation Vita and then went to other systems like the PlayStation 4 and so on and so forth. It's an episodic game that contains four episodes and two chapters per episode. So let's start out with the story first of all. This game takes place after, of course, Revelations 1, but it has a completely different story following different characters. In this story, you follow Claire Redfield and Moira, who is Barry Burton's daughter and you try to figure out what's going on with the terrorist organization and everything else that's happening right now in the world. You're part of a group called TerraSave, which is a bio-anti-terrorism group very similar to something like you saw in the first game. I'm trying to be kind of vague on a lot of the names in specific because the terminology does play into the story and it does allow for some of the twists and turns. The episodic nature of this game is kind of weird though because it almost gives you like four different climaxes, four different conclusions. It has an overall satisfying end to it and you do figure everything out, but the first chapter of course is broke up in the present and the last chapter is in the future a little bit. So trying to tie these two chapters together from episode to episode can take a little bit of work and it's not really a straightforward story. I'll be honest, I did not enjoy the story in this game nearly as much as the first game, and I kind of like the old school Resident Evil formula where you just go and explore the ship. The story in this game is very reminiscent of Resident Evil Code Veronica, so if you enjoyed that story and you enjoyed the twists and turns and the different big baddie, then you'll enjoy this. Let's hit the gameplay now. So the gameplay in this is a third person over the shoulder action shooter and it has a lot of really good adventure and puzzle elements intertwined with that as well. Essentially, each episode sees you trying to chase down who you think is the bad guy as you go through a gauntlet of crazed psychopaths and killers and figure out different puzzles. It is very much a Resident Evil game and because of the story structure it makes it extremely linear. There is virtually no backtracking in this game. You do most of everything you do from point to point. Because of this, the game is broke up at the menu and it allows you to go back to any chapter or section episode that you visited before. This is really nice because there's a lot of cool collectibles and you can upgrade your weapons and get different stuff by replaying certain sections. You can also get really good at it and improve your times to put basically scores up on the internet. One of my favorite things about Revelations 1 and 2 is how they have these abilities to go back and replay sections and to improve your weapons. You can essentially become a god by the time you choose to play hard mode and limit it as much as possible. A lot of the best collectibles are in hard mode, so let's hit combat now. As I stated at the beginning, the combat in this is an over-the-shoulder third-person shooter, and it's a very, very good one, very competent. The only thing that causes issues is the frame rate, and I'll discuss that when I get to the graphics and animations. But because of that, it causes the combat to be a little wonky, and you don't necessarily feel where you're going to hit at the right moment in time. Unlike the first Resident Evil Revelations, which was a very, very smooth frame rate and, and had a very good feeling with the combat, this game kind of frustrates you from time to time. When you think you actually did something, you may not have. It's not necessarily the biggest issue, but when you go from the first one to the second one, it is a noticeable downgrade in the combat. Now in comparison to a lot of other third person shooters you'll find on the Switch, this is still a very very good and competent game. It really can only be held up and compared to its predecessor, which is a pretty good company to be in in my opinion. So the other element of combat we have to talk about is your other party members. The little girl that you have with you is pretty much useless. She can run and hide and she can throw bricks, but that's about it. The other one, Moira, she has a crowbar and she can do some decent melee damage, but she's not very intelligent and doesn't do a lot to actually help you. She does have a flashlight to blind enemies, which can be useful and help you find items and weapons throughout the game. 
So with that being said, I think we should go to the next category now, the graphics and animations. So this game was built to run on a little bit more powerful hardware than the original Revelations. And because of that, it causes it to have some performance issues. They were definitely trying to achieve more things with this game, and it makes it suffer. You go from the perfect steady 60 FPS you had in the first one down to about 45 FPS or so on average. Now, while the game looks a little better and looks a little smoother and the animations are really nice, this really makes the performance suffer terribly. And this game will drop as low as 30 or below in the frame rate. And when you're in the middle of a firefight, that can actually cause you some real issues. This is really my biggest harp about this entire game, is the frame rate. Everything else is very good and a very good and competent port on the Switch's side. Now let's talk about the animations. The animations on the other hand in this game are far more smooth. Everything looks a little bit more lifelike, and as you can see in the cutscenes here, they took a little bit more time developing the character models themselves. They have a lot more polygon count to them, and the characters probably have more frames of animation as well. So it's kind of a toss-up. You really have to decide whether that frame rate or that increase in animation and fidelity is really worth it. Well, next up, let's talk about the controls and audio. Well, let's start with the controls, first of all. And they're pretty decent. They do their job well. It has different sensitivity options. You can invert your axis as well. And you can basically customize your buttons to do what you need to. There are certain actions that you have to stick to in the game that you cannot change or manipulate, but they don't affect you. I really do like this control scheme and I think it fits well. It's almost identical to the first ones. They did swap a couple of buttons, such as which button uses your herb. But other than that, the game works great. Another thing too is that the Pro Controller for this game will make your enjoyment level go through the roof in comparison to the Joy-Cons. The Joy-Cons travel with the joysticks themselves can be kind of frustrating especially when you're moving around with slower moving characters. I highly recommend using the Pro Controller for this game. Well next up let's talk about the audio. And the audio in this game is pretty good as well. It has a lot of ambient sounds and the music kind of follows you in a slow kind of monotone but at the same time the sounds are three-dimensional and i love that when a zombie is to your right or to your left or behind you they actually sound that way and some of the most frustrating games things about other zombie games are when they don't do this feature in a correct manner it doesn't bring proper suspense and it doesn't bring proper action to the game. It doesn't build that moment for you. So, let's hit the conclusion now. Well, in conclusion, I do believe this is a must-buy. It is digital only, it is for download, but you can buy the physical version of Revelations 1 and it does come with the download code for this game. So, I do feel okay about that. We do know Capcom is notoriously cheap, and they would not spare for the 32 gig cartridge for this game to be on it. This download size is about 22, 23 gigs in size and you really need to have the space for it. So, with all that being said, I do think that this game is worth every penny. That concludes our game of the week. Thank you so much for watching. This video was an absolute blast to make. I upload every single Monday. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like and subscribe. And have yourself a great rest of your day. This is Ogre27Kane, signing out.